Whether it's ancient combat or modern, winning is what it's all about. But how do you win? This man has learned the hard way. Now, he's ready to show you. Ancient warriors dreamed of a long-range weapon that could pierce through a man and his armor with pinpoint accuracy. Such a weapon was created, one of the first handheld mechanical killing machines. Next quest, how to win with the crossbow. Right, gentlemen, you're all skilled in various weapons, but the only skill you're going to need this time is the possession of one eye and two fingers. Let me explain. Bow. The Chinese had it by the 6th century BC, the Greeks used it by the 4th century BC, the Romans used it mainly in a heavy siege version called the Ballista. After the Romans, there's no firm evidence of it until the 10th century AD, which is where the story. You're going to be taught how to use the various types of medieval crossbow, which is where you will need your one eye and two fingers. After that, we'll introduce you to the modern high-tech weapon, and you will compete against each other in a final challenge. In medieval times, the crossbow was recorded in 947 AD at the Siege of Senlis, where it caused heavy casualties. When the Normans invaded England in 1066, the crossbow... Soon after that date, the crossbow became the major missile weapon in Europe. So how was the crossbow invented? Well, I think this is one possible answer. If you accidentally draw a bow with too short an arrow, the arrow can get hooked up behind the bow. Now, some early archer must have realized this could be quite useful. The energy of the bow is now stored. All I need to do is find some way of mechanically releasing that energy. Now, if I replace my arm with a piece of wood and make some kind of trick to release the arrow, well, then I got myself a crossbow. The earliest medieval crossbow was called an arbalest. A short bow stave of yew or elm, often protected by skin, was lashed into a wooden stock or tiller. About halfway along the tiller was this rotating catch, the nut. This was made of brass or horn. At the bottom of the nut, there is a notch, and into that notch went the trigger, this Z-shaped item here. The string was pulled back to engage with the nut. A little pressure on the trigger would release the nut and send the string flying forward. Now, the crossbow was loaded, or spanned, by foot under the bow stave and, and drawing the string back onto the nut. The bolt was then placed inside the string, and the whole thing was released by a touch on the trigger. So what was the advantage of the crossbow over the much simpler bow? Mike, you're an archer, you take my bow, there's some arrows there for you. Darth, take the crossbow, there's some bolts there. You can kneel down and rest on this. Now, from behind those hay bales, a head is going to appear at some point over the next few minutes, like that. And I want you guys, at point-blank range, to shoot it, all right? While Mike and Darth take aim and wait for their target to appear, Dan and Phil learn about the types of arrow shot by the crossbow. A crossbow fires a short arrow called a bolt or a... It's laid along this groove cut on the top of the tiller. And these are generally made of yew or ash. They have two or three fletchings at the back. Some of the fletchings were spiralled to give the bolt a spin in flight. Now, this one is designed to punch through plate R. Slightly longer, thinner point would be best against male. And then there's a whole range of broadheads. These are for use against unarmoured soldiers and the need for hunting. The quarrels and bolts were kept in a quiver, a box that was hung from the belt. Any luck yet? Nope, not yet. Although the early arbalest was primitive compared to later, more powerful crossbows, the effect of this weapon on the battlefield was huge. It was absolutely deadly, especially at close range. This was a revolution in armor as important in its day as the gun was to later generations. It was the first handheld mechanical killing machine. Just look at that guy over there with the bow. The hand bow required muscular strength and steadiness. It cannot be held at full draw for any length of time, whereas with the crossbow, 
You got it. I just pulled the trigger. My arm was hurting, and when I went to relax it, the target came up, and I wasn't ready. Well, that's just the point. The crossbow was ready. And look at you. You have to stand up to use your weapon. You're an open target. The mm -hmm. can kneel behind cover and take his shot when the target appears. The crossbowman even had his own special type of shield. It was called a pavis. He would carry it on his back, move into position, and then set it up on this stand. Then he could span his bow safely behind the protection of the shield. He could then shoot it, still protected. Now, many medieval battles were sieges, and the crossbow was an ideal weapon either to attack a castle or to defend it. It just depended which side had one. The arbalest, once spanned, could be fired at leisure without effort. It merely required alignment and the correct elevation for the distance of a chosen target. But there's more. So, had you shot that crossbow before? First time. Sure, have a go. As I said, a good bowman needs physical strength and a lifetime of practice. But with a crossbow, anyone can be taught how to load, aim and shoot with reasonable accuracy in a very short space of time. This was the first really effective missile widely available to common soldiers who were unskilled and who needed very little training. Most importantly, the crossbow could fire a bolt which flew faster, further, more accurately and with greater penetration than any archer's period. In 1099, during the First Crusade, Anna Komnena, daughter of the Byzantine Emperor, wrote, They not only pierce through a shield, but also pierce a man and his armour through and through. The crossbow was subject to continuous development and improvement, especially in loading techniques. The first improvement was this, the stirrup fitted to the head of the tiller. This was placed on the ground, the foot was placed inside it, and this made the pull of the string much easier. As crossbows became more powerful, they required stronger methods of loading or spanning. The first of these was the spanning belt. This was simply a belt with a hook attached. The crossbowman placed his crossbow on the ground, kneel down, put the hook over the bowstring, and then he could use the full force of his body to pull that string up. A further refinement was to put the hook on a pulley, which moved along a cord. One end of this was attached to the belt, and the other to a peg on the tiller. The body pulled the string back as before, but the pulley gave a two-to-one mechanical advantage. From around 1300, the metal workers of Europe discovered how to make bow stays of steel, a relatively high resilience. Now, these were a great improvement, but they were expensive, and they required some extremely skilled metalworking. The bow stay was usually held in a cut in the front of the tiller, and it was either bound on with cords or secured by a system of braces and wedges. There we are. These more powerful crossbows had a much stronger spanning system to load them. Now, the windlass was a metal frame that attached over the butt end of the tiller. Connected to it was this drum with two winding handles, connected to a couple of cords and a whole system of pulleys. And with these two hooks, they hooked over the bowstring, and then the windlass itself was wound up. The string is pulled backwards over the nut, and when it's at that point, you want to check that the trigger is fully engaged. Now the windlass is wound down to engage the bowstring onto the nut, and the windlass itself is then removed. Now, at last, you have a really powerful crossbow with a mechanical spanning system, a truly deadly weapon. As the crossbow spread, so did the this weapon inspired. It wasn't just that it was so deadly, it was that now a common peasant could, at long range, pierce the finest male and kill a member of the nobility. It's not surprising that the knightly classes opposed this weapon. In 1139, Pope Innocent II declared, the deadly art, hated of God, of crossbowmen and archers, should not be used against Christians and Catholics on pain of anathema. Of course, Muslims and infidels are game. 
but no one could stop the use of such a great weapon. It was a favourite of King Richard I of England. He used it against Muslims and Christians alike. At the siege of Chalouz in 1199, he was mortally wounded, Obolt, which some saw as God's punishment. Coming up, our team learns to use the various types of ancient crossbow and gets to compare them with other weapons. Conquest will return in a moment, here on the History Channel.